Over the last few years, I've been very fortunate, very lucky to be able to do a lot of commercial projects. A lot of the work has been mainly for sort of clothing companies, whether that be new collections, or I've also been doing event photography for sports teams and just kind of like various shoots for commercial clients ranging all sorts of niches. Today, I wanted to make a video kind of talking about the importance of creating a strong portfolio and how that leads to being able to monetize your creative work and sort of sustain you in the long run. And even if you're trying to go, for instance, freelance full time or kind of dip your toes more into the professional client world, why a portfolio is so important in my opinion. I think a good way to go into this would be first to kind of like talk about what a portfolio is and it's like use in the professional client world and then kind of go into detail about how I would go about building a portfolio from scratch from today if I were to start over. So the process of creating work for clients is pretty interesting. It's either directly through the company, a client reaches out to you directly or they hire an agency or a third party to go ahead and outsource sort of the management of the production of the shoots and everything that goes on behind the scenes of creating the actual photo shoot or video shoot. And in this gig culture, it's so important to have a portfolio. From my experience, brands and agencies typically reach out to creators, photographers, videographers based off of what they've created in the past. It's almost always the person that wants you to create a photo set or video deliverables for a company they've seen your work in the past and they can reference something that you've made before and they want you to recreate sort of like maybe not exactly in the same fashion, but sort of the same energy, the same style for their own brand for their product. At the end of the day, it's kind of a simple transaction. They have money and they want to purchase assets, whether that be photo or video, for their brand and they want to just make sure that they get the value for the money that they're using on this transaction. Now, in this day and age, portfolios can take various shapes and forms. A big portfolio that a lot of people use, Instagram. Another one that most professionals use and I also highly recommend is a website where a client or agency can go to your website and see the past work that you've created. And what this does is this highlights slash showcases what you have done in the past, the styles of work, and all the people really wanna do is try to like imagine or envision you and the stuff that you've created being recreated for them for their campaign or their deliverables or their restaurant or whatever medium that you're doing this on. That's all professionalism really is. It's just being able to recreate at a certain level of quality over and over again for various clients or just like in your work in general. Now, the question is, how do you go about building a portfolio, a professional looking portfolio in 2023? And I think that can only be done through repetition, practice and creating bodies of work that are in the same niche or kind of same realm of the work that you see yourself wanting to produce for clients. So to give you an example, if I was really interested in creating work for the biggest streetwear brands or sportswear brands in the world, I wouldn't go about practicing my photography on, let's say, environmental landscape shots or street photography per se. Those are great ways to enhance your photography skills. But what I personally would do is I would go ahead and start looking at past campaigns from your favorite brands, past bodies of work that you really admire and taking bits and pieces, looking at angles of light, especially looking at posing, looking at what comes out of a campaign. So one thing you can do is go out with friends or people that you might know or even hire maybe some local models and go out and shoot mock campaigns. Mock campaigns are where you make assets for like a, not a fictional brand, but like a brand that you're, you're envisioning yourself shooting for. And you can go ahead and create some assets in that fashion. To help you envision this, I thought the easiest way would be just to go out and do one. So I went out with some friends and did a mock campaign for the Moab Shoes, which is by a brand called Morel, and they're an outdoor hiking brand. So prior to this shoot, I went ahead and sat down and thought about what the purpose of this shoot was. And throughout the process, I wanted to make sure I kept sort of the client in my head and at all times try to think about if I were somebody paying for these photos, what I would say just in terms of like the final outcome. So in order to match the brand, we went out into the forest and we brought two pairs of, two or three pairs actually, of that, that specific shoe model. And I went with my friends and shot some test images, sort of with the goal of kind of creating this campaign based around this shoe. So we've got a simple setup here. Pretty cheap strobe lights here. One with an umbrella and then one just kind of giving a little extra fill light. 
So from the get-go, I knew in my mind that we wanted to really focus on not only the shoe, but the shoe in action in its environment. And so we brought a few pieces of equipment, nothing crazy. We brought a really cheap strobe flash, an umbrella, and then also we shot this both on film and digital because those are two formats that I really enjoy shooting on, especially film. I really want to shoot more film for professional client use. And so that was something that kind of really focused on for this shoot. We had a few poses that we had in mind, but nothing really concrete. All I thought about throughout the shoot though, was that the one thing of sort of putting yourself in the client's mind of making sure that the shoe is always or almost always in the frame because that's the main product that you're trying to sell. Make sure that you get close-ups of the shoes and also mainly just making the image look interesting while also making sure that the exposures on the shoes was, was visible so that these could be used in a potential campaign. And I was very happy with the images that we got. We tried out a few different techniques. We really tried sort of exposing Jojo the model brighter and kind of bringing down the environment so that he felt almost isolated, which is a technique that we tried out. And we just kind of shot a lot of different shots of both the shoe, him, the environment. And I think we came out from that shoot with a few images that I think we can really push and showcase sort of our ability to be able to shoot professional looking images. And these are images that we can use in our own personal portfolio for brands potentially in the future that let's say are like outdoor hiking brands or collections for clothing that is shot sort of like in a forest or a nature environment. One thing that I like to do after every shoot though, is I like to go ahead and analyze what went well during the shoot, what didn't go so well. And if I were a client purchasing these assets, would I be happy? And what are some things that I would say about the assets in order to make the final outcome better? So from this shoot in particular, I thought we had a great body of work, but there weren't too many actually detailed shots of the shoes from various angles. So if I was a client, I would always ask for more sort of product shots along with those typical like environmental cool angles and whatnot. If you can't see the shoes in great detail, then as a customer, it's difficult to go ahead and put money out and purchase these shoes. So that's something that a client could say and something that from this shoot in particular, I wish we had done more of. And in the future, it's something that I'm gonna keep in mind when I go ahead and redo the shoot or do the next shoot in this sort of same fashion. I think things to keep in mind are when you're first starting out, it's important to really get the reps in. What this does is not only does it help you grow your portfolio over time and help you really hone in on the style of work that you wanna be known for and the types of clients that you wanna attract, I think one of the big things is that it just gets you better at photography or videography or whatever medium that you're doing. As with a lot of other things in life, the more that you do it, the better you get at it. And just the quality of work overall increases, your body of work overall grows. And I guarantee you people will see your work. And most of my work is actually references. People will see maybe their friend works at this brand or they know somebody who is looking for somebody to do a photo shoot for a certain like, publication, they'll see the work and say, hey, I wanna introduce you to my friend who works at this company. Um, they do really great stuff and I think you'd be a great fit. That's where portfolio work comes in especially in handy. If someone is trying to refer you to somebody else, then they need to be able to show work that you've done that can appeal to somebody who is paying money and wants to purchase assets from you. If you have any questions on anything that I covered today or just anything in general, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, I'll try to get back to you and I appreciate you as always watching to the very end. One of my personal goals this year is trying to get more work published in print magazines. That's something that I'm trying to keep in mind as I create more mock work, more work in general. And hopefully this year, by creating that portfolio this year, next year, sometime in the future, I'll be able to get more work published. So right there with you guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.